is the 2021 Honda Ridgeline, and it's the pickup truck for people who aren't really into pickup trucks. If you're looking for the toughest, most capable truck out there, this isn't it. But if you're looking to dip your toe into the pickup truck pool, the Ridgeline might be the truck for you. Before I get started, be sure to check out Cars and Bids, which is my enthusiast car auction website. We've had some amazing sales recently, including this Lexus LX470, which sold for $62,500, a recent record sale price for a 100 series Toyota or Lexus model. We also recently sold this Mybox 62 for over $90,000, and this perfect Nissan 300ZX went for almost $36,000. If you're looking Looking to sell your cool car from the modern era, Cars and Bids is the place to do it. You'll find the most interest and the most money for your cool car. And if you're looking to buy a cool car, Cars and Bids has amazing selection with daily auctions. Check it out at carsandbids.com. I've borrowed this Ridgeline from Honda of El Cajon, which is my local Honda dealership here in the San Diego area. Honda of El Cajon has all of the latest Honda models, of course, and they're great to work with. And they have the new Ridgeline, which is just starting to arrive in dealerships across the country. Check out Honda of El Cajon by clicking the link in the description below. So let's talk Ridgeline. The original one came out back in 2006. This is the second generation version, which debuted for the 2017 model year. Now, it's been updated for 2021 with some big changes. The most noticeable is a new front grille designed to give it a tougher appearance, but there's also a new off-road looking package, which comes with these bronze wheels and some fender flares to add more style. But it's not fooling anyone. The Ridgeline is fundamentally different from other trucks in that it's built on the same platform as the Honda Pilot crossover SUV, meaning it's not as tough or as rugged as the Toyota Tacoma or the Jeep Gladiator, but it also drives less trucky than those trucks and it gets better gas mileage. Think of the Ridgeline as a crossover SUV that happens to have a truck bed for truck buyers who don't quite need as much truck from their truck. And today I'm going to review the 2021 Ridgeline and show you what it offers. First, I'll take you on a tour of this truck and show you all of its interesting quirks and features. Then I'll get it out on the road and drive it. And then I'll give it a Doug score. All right, I'm gonna start the quirks and features of the 21 Ridgeline by discussing some of the changes for 2021, starting up here with the grill, which has been updated to give it a bolder, more aggressive, more mean look. Honda has become very aware of this new trend in trucks and SUVs of off-roaders being really popular, but the problem is Honda doesn't really have any vehicles that fit in with this trend. So they've tried to take the vehicles they have and make them seem off-roadier, and this grill is one example. And another example is the off-road package that this Ridgeline has. You can see some of the stuff here. This package costs $2,800 extra. One of the things it includes is these bronze wheels, which I think actually look really good. They do make the truck look more off-roady focused. Now, in the center of the wheels, it says HPD. You might be wondering, what is that? Well, you've heard of TRD, Toyota Racing Development. This truck has HPD, Honda Performance Development. <laughs> That's kind of an embarrassing copy, frankly, but that is the off-road package of this truck, the HPD package, and it also includes these fender flares, these plastic flares over the fender, again, to give the truck a more aggressive, meaner, bolder look. Also included in this off-road package, this graphic on the side that literally says HPD, Honda Performance Development, to make your truck seem even cooler. It's kind of a weird thing. Honda knows TRD is very popular, so this sort of mimics that, but there's no lift kit, there's no chunkier tires, you just get mostly cosmetic stuff, like they're trying to be off-roady, but they just don't really know how. But next up, beyond the somewhat questionable off-road package with the Ridgeline, there are some neat features with this truck. One of them is the tailgate. You can open it like a normal tailgate, just pull the handle and it goes down, pretty standard. Or you can see the word release is printed on the bumper, sort of subtly hidden on the top of the bumper there. That's because there is a 
second release right above that. You pull on that and then the tailgate opens like a door. So you have two different ways you can open the tailgate depending on which one is most convenient for the type of stuff you're about to throw back there. Unfortunately, you don't have the ability to open the tailgate from the key fob like most modern pickups do. Press a button and it falls down. They don't have that on the ridgeline, but they do have these two trick tailgate openings instead. And the ridgeline's next interesting quirk comes inside the bed itself. You can see when you open this up, it looks like just a standard pickup truck bed, nothing too unusual, except that this part actually opens up like a trunk. You have this little latch here, you can pull it and then it pops open and then you have a trunk within your bed like you would have on a regular sedan. You can put stuff in here, keep items in here if you don't want them exposed to the elements or potentially stealable when they're sitting in your open bed. That's a pretty cool feature. And it gets even cooler than that because this in-bed trunk has a drain plug. Right over here you can just twist this, pull it out, and then you can drain this whole area, which means that you can theoretically fill this up with ice and make it a cooler. And there's some big benefits to that. It means if you want to add more ice to your cooler, you can just take your your truck to the store. You don't have to pick up the cooler, walk into the store, that whatever. You just dump the ice right into your truck. Now the drawback is that you have to get all your stuff out of the bed before you can actually use your in-bed cooler, but it's an interesting idea. And if you don't want to use it that way, you can just use it like a normal trunk for normal stuff. And two other interesting things about this in-bed trunk. For one thing, it locks. You can see right by the handle, there's a little key slot. You can twist it and lock up the trunk if you want. And there is an emergency inside trunk release in here. This is classified as a storage area like a trunk large enough for you to kidnap someone. And so there's a little inside release that someone can use to climb out just like the trunk of a car, which is kind of funny. And by the way, one other notable quirk in the Ridgeline's bed, you have this little storage compartment over to the right side of the bed. You can twist these little tabs and open it up. And when you do, you can see, well, it's a storage compartment. Now this is sort of a base level ridge line, but higher level ones have an electrical outlet in here. So you can use it to charge stuff or power stuff when you're tailgating or camping, which is obviously a very convenient spot for an outlet. And next up we move inside the ridge line, but there are quite a few more quirks in here than I expected. It's a surprisingly quirky truck. One interesting item is the gear selector. Old school truck, you just pull that column shifter and stick it in gear. Not this thing, you have little buttons in the center. You can see here, park is on the top. For reverse, you pull back on this little switch that puts you in reverse. Neutral is also a button and then drive is in the middle surrounded by silver because that's the most important one. Certainly a rather interesting gear lever common to Honda products but unusual to everybody else. Now right below the gear lever another quirky button is this one which has a picture of a truck on sort of like a rough road although if you look closely you can see that is clearly the outline of a ridge line which is a nice little touch. But anyway you press that and that selects your drive modes. So you tap that to go through your your different drive modes and you can see they are displayed in the gauge cluster all of the different drive modes available to you in your ridge line and this button allows you to select between them now speaking of the gauge cluster here is a very interesting ridge line quirk you look in the gauge cluster and you don't see a speedometer you have the tachometer over on the left and then on the right you have like the fuel gauge and the temperature but there is no speedometer in here very strange your speed is given to you in this giant digital readout at the very top of the gauge cluster which is like unusually wide wide, like large print speedometer for old people. Truthfully, it's strange to me they've chosen to prioritize the tachometer over the speedometer. This is an automatic transmission truck. You have paddle shifters, but you're not going to be doing much shifting. And so that's kind of a strange decision. But your speedometer is only displayed in that digital readout at the top. And speaking of the gauge cluster, another quirk I like, over to the left of the steering wheel, you have the eco button in this car. They call it econ, and it's this green circular button. But the thing I like about it is you tap that button, and then like a leaf appears in your gauge cluster to let you know you're in the more economical driving mode. And I guess that makes changes to the driving experience to make the car more efficient. But you can tap and untap that button to have the leaf appear and disappear right in front of you. And speaking of the gauge cluster, it's worth noting this is a pretty old school traditional gauge cluster setup with pretty limited functionality. You do have a center screen in here in full color and you can scroll through a few different items, trip odometers, tire pressures, and you can also use this screen to like 
like change your radio preset or the source that you're listening to, AM, FM, a music player, and turn up the volume. But that's about it. There's not too many different things you can do in this gauge cluster screen. Again, sort of a more old school, traditional gauge cluster setup, and a limited functionality. And that's also true if you go into the center of this interior to the infotainment screen. Now, this is a reasonably large screen, and it's very responsive to your touch, incredibly so, just like a smartphone, and it's intuitive to use, but again, pretty limited functionality. This is a relatively basish model ridgeline. It doesn't have all that much stuff, including no navigation in here. So this is a pretty simple infotainment system you'll primarily be using just for music playing and phone looking up contacts and making calls. And frankly, that's about it. Not too much functionality built into this infotainment system, although it is relatively easy to use for the small amount of stuff that you will be doing with it. With that said, a few things worth noting in here. For one, the infotainment screen on the 21 Ridgeline now has Apple CarPlay, which will be a big deal for a lot of buyers. That alone will make the screen seem more useful and offer more features and make it seem more modern. The 21 Ridgeline also adds a volume dial. In the past, they didn't have a dial, and I guess you had to just tap to increase the volume, and that's very annoying, but now you have a dial, you can adjust it more easily. I also like the fact that contained within this infotainment screen in the app menu, you have a calculator. <laughs> I haven't seen that on too many other cars. You can be doing calculations while you drive down the road with your built-in Ridgeline infotainment system calculator. But it's worth noting this truck is pretty basic in some other ways too. This has a $41,000-ish sticker price, and it's missing some features I would expect at that number. For example, no heated seats in this truck or leather seats. I can excuse that. That's not really that big of a deal. Meanwhile, no sunroof in this truck. Again, I can excuse that. Not a huge deal to have no sunroof. Manual seats in this truck. No power seats for $41,000. Nah, that's kind of getting a little less excusable. You start to expect power seats at this price point. But how about the fact that the visor mirrors don't have lights? You can see the place where the lights would go. <laughs> but there are no lights there. They cheaped out on visor mirror lights. And I gotta say, at 41 grand, I want my sun visor mirrors to have lights. That probably saved them like 10 cents a car. Just put that in. With that said, the materials in this truck are pretty good for the money, frankly. They're not excellent or luxurious or particularly high quality, but they're fine. They look durable. They don't look too cheap and it's pretty nice in here. You also get a long list of standard safety features in this truck. You get lane keeping assist, which will steer you back over if you start to drift out of your lane. You have adaptive cruise control standard in this truck, and you have forward collision braking. So if you're about to hit something, the truck will stop automatically. Those are some pretty good features, especially to have standard, especially on a truck. Not all of them do. And frankly, if I had to choose between those features being standard and illuminated visor mirrors, I would choose those features, but it really should have illuminated visor mirrors too. And next up, we move on to the back seat of the Ridgeline, which has some neat tricks up its sleeve. For instance, right now, you can see it's doing its normal thing. It's being a seat <laughs> with a little bar underneath it to support it in place. But if you pull on this little handle on the side of the seat, you can see the seat bottom lifts up and that bar automatically sort of retracts into the seat bottom so that it can be as flush with the rear of the car as possible. Now, you can do this on both sides. And when you do, then you have a very large compartment back here where you can store stuff. I'm not sure if it's big enough to get in a bike, but you know, big stuff that won't fit in the back or you don't want it to get wet, you can stick back here if you put the seats up to turn it into more of a cargo area. Now, the especially cool thing here is you can put the seat bottoms back down and you see the little seat bar underneath extends back down to go back to its position supporting the seat. But the cool thing about this bar is that because the seat is only supported by a a bar, you can put stuff under the seat even if you have people sitting here. So most vehicles in back have like a whole assembly under the seat and you can't access underneath the seat. But with this truck, because you only have the bar supporting the seat, you can get items under the seat and out of sight. And that is a really cool touch. It's very versatile in back whether you put the seats up or not. With that said, aside from the trick seat situation, there's not really all that much going on back here. It's also pretty tight back here. It's worth noting the passenger seat is in a pretty normal spot and I'm sitting here with my knees pretty much digging into the passenger seat. Headroom is fine, but legroom not really all that great. Frankly, it seems smaller than a Honda Pilot back here. So the Ridgeline's pitch of giving you all the benefits of a crossover with the addition of a pickup bed, not entirely true because it isn't quite as large in the back seat as a crossover probably would be. It's also worth noting back here you don't have any charge ports for devices. Higher level Ridgeline trims do have charge
charge ports back here, but this one doesn't. Just some plastic blanks where those charge ports would go. And again, for $41,000, that seems like an oversight. I would expect rear charge ports back here. It's just what everybody wants in 2021. And finally, we move under the hood in the Ridgeline. You can see the engine. This is a 3.5 liter V6 with 280 horsepower, which makes it slightly more powerful than a Toyota Tacoma. Now, Tacoma people will say, yeah, but this is a car engine, which is true. This powertrain is also used in the Honda Pilot crossover. It's not like a dedicated truck power plant, but the benefit is you get better gas mileage. This gets 18 miles per gallon city, 24 on the highway with all wheel drive, which is pretty good for a truck, frankly. And by the way, the engine is just one of many things shared with the Honda Pilot. The engine is shared, I mentioned the platform is shared, but also basically the entire front end of the Ridgeline is the front end of the Pilot. Here, I'm covering the back and you can see this is just a Honda Pilot, right? Well, you take it away and you can see the bed is back there, but this is pretty much a Pilot from the middle of the truck on forward, the front seats, the engine, it's all Pilot. And that's okay, it makes sense to do it that way. And frankly, it's probably easier and cheaper for Honda to build a pickup truck when they're already making half of it as something else. <laughs> you just stick a truck bed on the back. As for the styling, I think it's fine. The pilot front end lends itself to a pickup truck okay, but I did like the original Ridgeline better. To me, it was more distinctive and kind of cooler than this one, which really just looks like half a pilot, half a truck. The first one kind of seemed like it had more imagination behind the design. And so those are the quirks and features of the 2021 Honda Ridgeline. Now it's time to get it out on the road and see how it drives. All right, driving the Ridgeline. Uh, and I gotta say, this whole off-road package, it's so interesting. Honda, they get why TRD is successful. They just don't have a vehicle to like TRDify. So they have this like mimicking HPD and they come up with a passport to try to be like the forerunner, but it's not as good. And you just see Honda and you wanna shake them and be like, develop a car and you can do this too, instead of these sort of like half-hearted attempts. But beyond the half-hearted off-roader attempt, I have to say, I do like the Ridgeline. I have never driven a second generation Ridgeline before. And it drives well. It drives like you'd expect from a crossover. And I can understand why a lot of people would like this car. Um, if you want a crossover or you're used to crossovers or SUVs, but you don't necessarily need the cargo space anymore, um, you know, enclosed cargo space, maybe you have working on a house, your kids are off to college, whatever, you want something that's uh, truckier, you know, but not too trucky, this is a pretty good vehicle. And given the sheer number of people in America who buy trucks every year, it seems to make sense to me that maybe there's a market for people who want a truck but don't necessarily want a truck. With that said, it's definitely a small market. These are not tremendously popular vehicles, but my understanding from the dealerships that I work with is the people who want them really want them. There's not really a good alternative. You know, they could go get a Tacoma or a Gladiator or whatever, but the reason they've showed up here is they want like that more car-like ride, that feel that they're used to with like a pilot. And on the road, you certainly get that. I mentioned the fuel economy benefit earlier. It's not a huge, it's a couple miles per gallon better than a Tacoma, not a lot of miles per gallon better. But the driving experience boost is pretty substantial. It feels uh, a lot more car-like in here than every other truck. In fact, it feels like I'm just driving along in a Honda Pilot, to be totally honest. The entire interior up here looks basically just like a Pilot, same steering wheel, same dash, everything. Um, and that's how it feels. The benefit is though that you get the added practicality if that's what you're looking for. One drawback I do have with this truck is it's pretty expensive. I mean, $41,000 for this one with all wheel drive and with the off-road package, but you know, missing some of the stuff I mentioned earlier, manual seats in a $41,000 vehicle, it's a tough sell, no sunroof, no heated seats. Um, a lot of people are gonna say, well, truck buyers don't care about that. But the thing is, I think Ridgeline buyers are different from truck buyers. And part of the reason they get this vehicle is because it provides some of those car-like comforts they're used to. So giving them $41,000 price point and not having some of those features, it's not ideal. It's probably not the greatest value. Of course, with that said, I look at the used market and Ridgelines hold their value pretty well, like a lot of trucks do, frankly, because they're workhorses. But in this case, there's limited production. There's not that many of them. And well-kept Ridgelines, especially first gens, keep their value well. Ultimately, I actually think it's kind of funny. You know, a lot of people have been asking me for a Ridgeline review for a long time. And I didn't review this generation when it first came out. So I was kind of waiting for a refresh, which we got in 21. And one of the things that I'm struck by with this Ridgeline generation is it's kind of boring. And that's intentionally so. Like, it's a versatile truck. 
Um, but it's not like cool or crazy or exciting. It's just intended to be a mashup of like a relatively competent truck and a very competent crossover. And that's what it is. And that's how it drives and that's how it feels. And if that's what you're looking for, I mean, if you go to the Toyota dealer and you feel the Tacoma is too trucky, the ride is too rough, it's more capability than you really need, which I could totally understand. This thing makes sense. And so that's the 2021 Honda Ridgeline. This will never have the off-roader enthusiast following as the Toyota Tacoma, but it's a great truck for city dwellers who want to carry around some stuff in the back without having to sacrifice crossover driving experience. And frankly, based on the number of these that I see around, I suspect there are more people like that than you might think. Anyway, now it's time to give the new Ridgeline a Doug score. Starting with the weekend categories and styling, the Ridgeline is a bit odd looking, sort of crossover in the front, pickup in the back. Not ugly, but just fine, and it gets a 5 out of 10. Acceleration 0 to 60 is about 7.2, 7.3 seconds, it gets a 1 out of 10. Handling is fine, secure, but not fast or thrilling, and it gets a 3 out of 10. Same deal with Fun Factor, despite the HPD decals and some off-roading intended mods, it just falls short of actual off-road capabilities, which really limits the fun here, and it gets a 2 out of 10. Finally, Cool Factor, these are sort of cool, they're rare and a bit interesting and it gets a 3 out of 10 for a total weekend score of 14 out of 50. Next up are the daily categories and features. The Ridgeline is reasonably well equipped and it gets a 6 out of 10. Comfort is fine, a bit better than a lot of pickups and it gets a 6 out of 10. Quality is good, the interior is only okay, a bit above average, but Honda reliability is legendary and it gets a 7 out of 10. Practicality is fine, normal for a 4 door pickup truck and it gets a 6 out of 10. Finally value, and the Ridgeline is okay, it's not too expensive for a truck but it falls short on some truck things and the off road version isn't really much of an off road. It gets a 5 out of 10 for a total daily score of 30 out of 50. Add it up and the Doug score is 44 out of 100, which places the Ridgeline here against some relevant vehicles. The Ridgeline ties the Ford Ranger, which is decent company, but it falls short of the off-roady trucks like the Chevy Colorado ZR2 and the Tacoma TRD Pro. If Honda wants to compete with those trucks in that highly popular segment, it's going to have to do more than some tires, wheels, and graphics. 